Good morning to all of you on this rather peculiar day. I have the honor to open the 36th session of the Working Group of the Universal Periodic Review, which is the 10th session of the third cycle. Before we start our meeting, I'd like to make an announcement, and that has to do, of course, with the newest Geneva measures, which were published yesterday only. Um, you will have seen that the cantonal authorities of Geneva yesterday announced new measures on top of the new federal Swiss measures which had been announced on Wednesday. And these uh, measures, of course, are also uh, meant to combat the spread of COVID-19 and will take effect tonight at 7 o'clock p.m. This morning... And this afternoon, UNO will discuss the implications of these new measures for meetings in the Palais des Nations. The Bureau of the Human Rights Council will meet over the lunch break uh, and will see what modalities we might be able to propose to the Council after these various meetings have taken place. I cannot say more at this stage. I regret that everything is very short notice for everybody, but I promise as soon as we know uh, whether we have a formula that we can propose to all of you for continuing the UPR tomorrow, we'll let you know in the course of this afternoon. In any case, we'll make an announcement this afternoon. I do not yet exactly know at what stage and with what content, but as I said, this is all very short notice for all of us. Now, turning to this working group session. Let me recall that the cycle of the UPR provides us with the renewed opportunity to take stock of developments, that's what it's all about, that have occurred since the previous reviews, in particular with regard to processes of implementation and follow-up. Speaker is Timo Leste. Welcome the delegation of Belarus to this session of the UPR and wishes to make the following recommendation. That Belarus abolish death penalty that Belarus develop a national poverty reduction strategy and budget with a particular focus on children and family in situation of vulnerability. Madam President, following the mass protests that began after the August 2020 election in Belarus, Timor-Leste remained deeply concerned by the allegation of the police brutality towards civilians. Timor-Leste encouraged Belarus to keep taking a step in the promotion and protection of human rights in, the, in its territory, such as the repeal of Article 193, one of the criminal codes criminalizing the activity of if of non resistor organization. We wish Belarus all the success during this review. I thank you, Madam President. Thank you very much. In the next delegation session, where a little later on we'll have the review of Liberia, uh, which will be chaired by Ambassador Johnson. I just wanted to make an announcement having to do with the current situation, you know, the cantonal decisions which were published yesterday. I wanted to let you know that we had a bureau meeting during the lunch break. Um, we had a dis we're still in discussion with the Swiss authorities as well as with UNOC to find out what exactly the details of the new Swiss announcements mean. And we will, of course, let you know as soon as possible, as soon as everything is clearer to us. But as you have no doubt gathered, what we know is that the new rules mean that we will have to reduce the number of persons physically present in this room drastically. So whatever the details that we hope we'll be able to announce this afternoon will be, we would already encourage everybody who wishes to participate in the remainder of the UPR session as from tomorrow to, if possible, pre-record video interventions. If that is not possible, prepare to participate via WebEx. We will share links for delegations to participate via WebEx and the Secretariat can also be contacted in case you have problems to sort out these problems. In any case, we'd also encourage all delegations to send us the transcript of their interventions in writing because this will make the work of interpreters much easier and also the work of those who need to write the report. Um, for those of you who will not participate, who will not make interventions, the WebEx will work in all the six official languages of the United Nations. 
the, sorry, the, the webcast, I'm sorry, the webcast will work in all the six official languages. Those who participate can use the WebEx, that's the other one. And uh, the country under review will make arrangements that they can be present in the room if they want to be present. Um, tomorrow morning we'll have a delegation who has actually traveled all the way from their capital. A few persons have traveled. So we'll be a we hope we'll be able to announce very soon how we're going to organize everything. But for the time being, we still have to wait for some answers, in particular from the Swiss authorities. That's as much as I wanted to say right now. Uh, we'll keep in contact with you. Um, and here I'd, I'd like to say goodbye to you now and hand over to Ambassador Johnson, who will be chairing the UPR of Liberia. And I welcome the delegation of Liberia, and I wish you all the best. Thank you. Timor-Leste. Vice President, Timor-Leste welcome the delegation of Liberia to this session of the UPR and thanks them for the report. As the outset, Timor-Leste would like to make the following recommendation. One, that Liberia discriminalize same-sex sexual conduct between consenting adults. Two, that Liberia remove any provision in legislation that provided for the death penalty. Mr. Vice President, despite the challenge ahead, Timor-Leste takes note of the positive progress made by the government of Liberia in the field of the freedom of expression and welcome the measure undertaken by Liberia to improve the enjoyment of human rights, such as the proper agenda for prosperity and development and the plan for improving the education sector. We wish Liberia a successful review. I thank you, Mr. Vice President. A very good day to one and all. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin our review of Malawi. Pursuant to Resolution 5, Stroke 1, the review is based on the national report, the compilation of information of the United Nations, and a summary of the information from other stakeholders, all prepared by UNHCR. I have the honor of giving the floor to His Excellency, Mr. Titus Ongisom Balo, the Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs of the Republic of Malawi, that he present his report. Your Excellency, the floor is yours. Timor-Leste, please. President, Timor-Leste makes the following recommendation. One, that Malawi strengthen its effort to protect women and girls with abolition from all forms of the violence and addresses the discrimination, stigmatization, and social exclusion faced by them. Two, that Malawi takes further steps to ensure the sexual offenses and trophy and eff effectively investigated. Madam Vice President, Timor-Leste thanks Malawi for enacting the Legal Education and Legal Practitioner Act, as well as the HIV H Prevention and Management Act in 2018, which saw the country commitment to improve the promotion of human rights in its territory. Timor-Leste further encouraged Malawi to continue to take a step towards the implementation of all its international human rights obligations, and we wish Malawi a successful review. I thank you, Madam Vice President. Muchas gracias. Ready to go, and we can start this meeting. But before we turn to the review of Panama, I'd like to say a few words of housekeeping. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody for their flexibility and their efforts to allow this session of the UPR to continue despite the extraordinary circumstances under which we're now required to work. And you know that we got new restrictions last week on Wednesday and another set of new restrictions even on Sunday. And we seem to be making it that we can adapt to all of these rules and thank you very much. I understand that the review this morning went quite smoothly, uh, with a large majority of delegations submitting pre-recorded video statements or participating through Zoom. I would like to recall at this stage that delegations are strongly encouraged to deliver their statements via pre-recorded video messages, if that is possible. Uh, and that is re recommended for two reasons. First, it is in the interest of everybody's health, 
And secondly, our experience has shown that this is actually the best way of making sure that we get a good sound quality and timely delivery. There is the alternative of uh, delivering statements via live, by Zoom, with a specific link that the Secretariat uh, has been established and that we can use, but I understand that the sound quality is a little bit less good and that there is always a certain time lag. So if you can, please pre-record your statements on video. In order to improve the sound quality in any case, uh, delegations are kindly required to use headsets when recording video statements or delivering statements via Zoom. When joining via Zoom, please rename to country, first name, last name, so that it will be easier for us to identify you. I would also like to ask delegations to place a country name plate in front of themselves or next to themselves when they record their statements uh, because that makes it easier then for everybody to recognize who is having the floor at the moment. It's even easier than putting out your flags. Uh, only delegations who are unable to pre-record video messages or participate via Zoom can exceptionally, and I say exceptionally, deliver their statements here in the assembly hall. If that is necessary for you, please get in touch with the UPR Secretariat as soon as possible so that we can make the necessary arrangements, which are not easy under the current circumstances. But again, I understand everything went well this morning, and I'm very happy, and I, I suppose so are you, in particular the countries of under review, that we, we can make it nonetheless. So we will now proceed with the review of Panama. In accordance with Resolution 5-1, the review is based on, as you know, the National Report, the compilation of UN information and the summary of stakeholders' information, both prepared by the OHCHR. And I now have the, the honor of giving the floor to Her Excellency Mrs. Maria Ines Castillo, uh, Minister of Social Development of the Republic of Panama, to introduce the report, and I understand we're going to see a video. So please, Secretary, do go ahead with the video. LGBTI persons, Bishop of Panama, and thanks them for their participation in the session of the UPR. Timor Leste cites this opportunity to make the following recommendation. One, that Panama take further steps to ensure that all allegations of torture or ill treatment were investigated promptly and impartially. Two, that Panama prohibit through legislative and administrative provision that use of corporal punishment in all settings, namely in a school and in children a child care institution. Madam President, Timor Leste further takes this opportunity to commend Panama engagement with the UPR mechanism that we note with appreciation the establishment of the national preventive mechanism attached to the Ombudsman Office as well as the adoption of Panama National Plan for the Comprehensive Development of Indigenous People in 2018. We wish Panama all success in all review. I thank you, Madam President. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Et je donne la parole aux... Thank you, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon to Ulaanbaatar. We will now proceed with the review of Mongolia. In accordance with Resolution 5-1, the review is based on national report, the compilation of UN information and the summary of stakeholders' information both prepared by OHCHR. I now have the honor to give the floor to His Excellency Mr. Basandor Barsuren, State Secretary of the Ministry of Justice and Home Affairs of Mongolia, to introduce the report. Sir, the floor is yours. Timor Leste. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Timor Leste extends its warm welcome to the distinguished delegation of Mongolia and makes the following recommendation. One, that Mongolia redouble its effort in combating corruption, including in the judiciary and the civil service. Two, that Mongolia takes further steps to ensure that children with disability are not socially excluded. Mr. Vice President, Mongolia had taken important steps to improve the fulfillment of human rights in its territory, among which Timor Leste highlighted the submission of the draft law on the National Human Rights Commission to the Parliament last year and the establishment of the Sub Council to provide guidance in the prevention and control of human trafficking. 
Timor-Leste encourages Mongolia to continue its effort and wishes them a successful review. I thank you, Mr. Vice President. Thank you very much. Next speaker is...